today I thought I would take us through what I think is some quite important features on the RC2 remote control. This remote control works with the Air 3, the Mavic 4 Pro, just to name a few of the drones. Now on the back you will have noticed the buttons. These are the C1 and C2 buttons. Now these buttons can be pre-programmed to complete a number of tasks, uh, set the camera, set cruise control, etc, etc. But I don't think a lot of us use them to their full potential. So what I want to do is to take us through what the functions are that can be programmed into the C1 and C2 buttons and how best to use them. So without further ado, let's get going. So, in order to first get into the area where you can assign tasks to your C1 and C2 buttons, you need to click on the three dots on the top right hand side of the remote control. Then what you want to do is click on control, which is your second tab. Scroll down and you'll see down here you've got stick mode and just below that you have button customization. Now the top option here is button customization, C1 and C2 buttons. So your C1 button is on the left hand side and your C2 button is on the right hand side. So for the first one I thought I'd take us through something which is quite interesting and I actually use a lot. So when you click on the C1 button you get three options, the control option, camera option and other. And we'll go through all three, just so that you can see exactly what it is that they do. So, in the first instance, we'll go to control and we'll click on recenter tilt down gimbal. Now I always find this really, really useful. So basically what this does, when I press the C1 button, and I'll take us up just a little bit. So here we are on a horizontal, just looking out over the park and some houses. So when I press the C1 button, the gimbal will move 90 degrees downward into basically the 180 degree position. So it's looking straight down. Now this is a great option if you're looking to do overhead panning shots of areas following vehicles, etc. So we take ourselves back down again. And what we will do now is we'll look at the next option. So we click again on those three dots and it will take you to the menu that we've already been to. So, click on the C1 button, and we're gonna do follow an FPV mode. So, at the moment, we are in the follow mode. So this is the normal, traditional mode for your drone, where the drone will move left and right, but the gimbal will stay level. So the horizon stays level. And this is the follow mode. This is where you won't have your goggles, but this is just the normal flight mode for the drone. So what we've done then with the C1 button is we press it and we'll see that it says it switched to FPV mode. What that will do is when you start moving, the horizon will tilt as the aircraft tilts. So the gimbal will move with the aircraft. And again, if we take ourselves back again, the horizon tilts as the aircraft tilts because it's in FPV mode. That's if you wanted to switch quickly to this mode. What you can then do is just decide, I want to switch back to the follow mode. So click the C1 button again, and you will come back into the follow mode. And as you see, the horizon is nice and level. Now the next mode that we will go into, again clicking on the top three dots, is the auxiliary light mode. So the auxiliary light usually comes on when you're landing at night time, if you've got it set to automatic mode. So what we have here is at the bottom of the aircraft, you have a light. So if you're doing something at night time and you want that extra bit of light, and if I press the C1 button, the light comes on. So the next option we will look at is looking at, after the auxiliary, is cruise control. Now this is great. This is a really good option if, for instance, you are following a drone that's surveying a road. So I've, got, I've had a few tasks where I've had to survey a kilometre of road, just take video, and I need to have the drone going at a certain speed so that I can walk safely behind it to keep an eye on it. So with this, what I would simply do, we'll move the drone back just to get ourselves in position. 
Now as I move forwards, what you'll see in the bottom left hand corner is I'm moving up point, um, I'm moving at about one meter a second. I press the C1 cruise control and now the drone will just keep moving in that direction at that speed. So about one meter a second, which is great. And obviously you've got the obstacle avoidance as well. Although I tend not to um, use that too much. I like to just use my sight in order to try and observe obstacles. And with the cruise control, you can move the aircraft left and right and it will continue at the same speed. Thereby, you can keep an eye on the aircraft, making it go left and right but you don't necessarily have to worry about the speed of the aircraft because it's going to keep to the same speed that you wanted it to. And then what you would do is simply press C1 and it would come out of the cruise control. The next option that we have when we go back into the C1 button area is Vision Assist. Now this is great, this is a great invention that they have, but sometimes I don't think we use it to its full potential. So if I'm deciding that I want to fly to the side, but I don't really know what it looks like on the side of the aircraft, because perception is everything, I can press the C1 button and the vision assist will come up. So as you'll see here, the top arrow is point is yellow, and that means that it's the forward vision assist. Now, even though my gimbal is moving around, and you can see my gimbal is moving around in the bottom left, the vision assist is staying where it is because it's the front camera. Now, if I move myself to the left slightly, what you'll find is that the left vision assist camera comes in, and I can see if I might hit a tree, and if I need to take myself up over that tree. Again, if I move myself to the right, I can see the vision assist on the right-hand side of the aircraft coming into action. The same will happen as well if I am reversing. So I reverse the aircraft and the vision assist at the back is coming into action. And if I come forwards, the vision assist at the front is coming into action. So you can see me there on the vision assist. So we just take the aircraft back up again and we can come out of the vision assist just by pressing the C1 button. And again, with that, you can go back to your map and you can minimize the map on the bottom left-hand corner. What we're going to look at now, because that's all of the controls done, is we're going to look at camera. So if we look at camera here, I clicked on the first option, which is auto exposure lock on or off. So what I want to do here, if I'm flying in, say, a foresty area or around a house where the light is changing, I want to try and keep the exposure level the same because it makes it easier for editing. So here it has me here and I'm going to press the C1 button. So exposure lock is on which means that when I come up and I move to a different area where the light is different the contrast doesn't adjust and the exposure doesn't adjust now you see here I'm facing these houses and it's a little bit hazy but there's still some sunshine behind me if I click off with C1 for auto exposure lock you'll see a slight change there so that's with it off with the auto adjusted I'm going to put it on again now by pressing the C1 button. And as I move down, you'll find that the exposure doesn't change. It just stays the same as I come down. And it comes back to me here and I press auto exposure. So it's back on auto and you can see it's slightly changed there. What we can move on to next is increase EV and then we're going to use the C2 button to decrease EV which is quite nice. So this is basically where you will manually, manually adjust your exposure level. So if I press the C1 button what will happen is I will increase the EV by 0.3 going up to 0.7 and 1 and then 1.3 you get the idea and then the other one you just decrease it 
and we're going back to zero and we can take ourselves all the way down if we wanted to like minus two if it was a really really sunny day what we'll look at now is the c1 button camera settings if you wanted to quickly get into camera settings this option you just click the c1 button and it'll take you straight into camera settings that's it if you wanted to change between normal or d-log or something on the photos maybe you wanted raw or jpeg or if you wanted to move and have those guidelines in there the next option we can look at if we go back to control custom button again the c1 button and we look at switch cameras so this is useful and i use this quite a bit so at the moment i'm on the times three camera just so as you can zoom in and see me and i don't really get much noise from the propellers if i'm on the normal widescreen camera then i press the one what will happen is i press one and we go now out to the other camera the wide angle camera what i can now do is press that button again the c1 button and i'll switch automatically to the times three camera so if we go back in here what you'll find is switching to lens with high zoom and low zoom that's really exactly the same there's no difference okay uh, with uh, the c1 button and having that you can adjust the focal length here as well that's another option so what you can do is with the c1 button rather than using the zoom scroll wheel to zoom in and out what you can do is just press the c1 button and it'll quickly zoom in from times three to times six to times nine and then it will come back again and the same is true if you are on the wide angle camera it'll switch easily then rather than you having to use the scroll wheel to zoom in The next option that we have here, focus track. So what you can do is decide that you want to have a quick focus track on someone. So you've seen something, seen someone in a match or a game, a bit of activity, maybe a car, press the C1 button. I've got my auto subject selector set. So what I do is I press the C1 button and it comes up with my nice selection button. And I'm on spotlight mode because I don't want the drone really to move around. I just want it to pivot. So if you're on spotlight mode, the drone will just pivot in place, thereby still following you, but the drone itself isn't going to fly around, which is a good safe option if you're filming a sports match or something from behind the goal. So what happens here, if you were to press the C1 button, again, it will move directly into active track. And it will put you in the manual mode. You can always obviously click the auto mode and it will do its auto stuff, but we don't want that here. So in order to get out of focus track that you've had on, just press the X button. So what you need to do now to get the next option, if you've been on focus track, click on the three buttons, uh, make sure that focus track is set, and then click C1 again to disable focus track then you will be able to go in and click the next option which is playback so click on the c1 button and you will be able to then see the videos that have been taken so if we click on the playback button now that c1 button will move now into the videos that i've taken today and i displayed on the screen there and then to get back to your normal screen just press the back arrow the next option, probably one of the final ones, is other. Now you can assign none. So if you are flying and actually you don't want any button function because you don't want the camera to do something you're not expecting, you can just set both of them to none and nothing will happen. So I'm pressing the C1 button now and nothing is happening. And the last one you can do is if you're flying and you decide, you know what, I want to fly a waypoint mission and I want to create one quickly. So what we'll do is just move ourselves back, press the C1 button, and you'll find that the waypoint task menu comes up. So you press the C1 button once, and you put in your waypoint. 
move forward or to the area you want, press the C1 button again, and you'll get a, a second waypoint. Move yourself around if you want, get to your next location, press the waypoint mushroom, move back into yourself, and then press the C1 button. And then you're all done. You can do all your other changes if you want to as well. And then simply press go. And from there, it will move now to its start position where it will execute that waypoint mission that you've just quickly set up. Now, this is really, really useful if you are filming around the exterior of a house and someone wants a really nice video around the outside of their house. So rather than you having to fly it manually and trying to avoid obstacles, just move the aircraft into specific positions you want it to go into so that when you press play, the camera is focused and pointing to the area that you want it to go to. I hope that you've enjoyed yourself and I hope that you found this useful. Thank you very much.